is Trivia for Kids, where it's not just for adults anymore. Hey, yo! Hey, hey, hey! It's episode 34! <laughs> I feel like every time we do one of these, we think, all right, how are we going to be cool when yeah, we start this episode? Yeah. And then we're both like, hey! <laughs> I'm Casey. I'm Quinn. And thanks for listening to the Trivia for Kids podcast, episode 34. Well, I'm very excited for this episode. Are you? Yes. You had a big day today. I'm sorry that we have to record the podcast tonight, because tell me about your big day. First day of school. First day of school. And how did it go? Very well. I love all my teachers. And how about your friends? Were they good? Did you miss them? I did. I did. I very much missed them. How's your locker? It's very good and very easy to open. I was going to say, did you figure out the combo? Yes, I can do it quicker than most people. Ooh, fantastic. So what was your favorite part about the day? I don't know. The lunch that you brought? Mm, I liked science a lot. What did I you like the, about science? I liked the teacher. He um, did a quiz and we had to find out more about him. Ooh, that's and fun. he had like a two side of the room. So he had two pictures on the board and it would say two different things. And you have to decide which one was his favorite or which one he was or which one was. Yeah. You know, one of them was like how old he is. And you had to go to the side of the oh, one of the sides of the room to see. That's fun. Yeah. That was so you literally fun. had to get up and move to a side of the room. Like if yes. it said 21 and 28, then you'd move to the 21 side or the 28 side. Yeah, he oh, was a... actually 28. So, well, yeah, he's 28 and 38. Well, I've seen him. You could tell he wasn't 38. Come yeah. on, make it a little harder than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like fun. I'm glad you had a great first day. Thanks. How was the bus? Long. <laughs> Long. It's it was just, okay, it's though. Cramped. Do you feel like you're one of the big kids on the bus? No, because I'm really tiny. <laughs> Like young, tiny, or just small, small. in general? Yeah. Small. Well, hopefully this year you'll grow a little bit, right? Hopefully. Hey, you want to hear some jokes? Let's do it. This week we've got two of them. Two jokes, because we've had a lot of great ones. So, the first joke comes from listener Molly. You ready? What is a light year? No idea whatsoever. The same as a normal year, just with fewer calories. Do you get it? Yes. Next joke is from a couple of brothers named Jackson and Logan. May I say this one? Sure. All right. What do you call a dinosaur that is sleeping? Sleeposaurus. A dinosaur. <laughs> I like that one a lot. That is a good one. All right. Thanks for the jokes, guys. Let's get this podcast going. Let's get it. Here's how the show works. Trivia for Kids consists of five rounds with seven questions each. We will announce the answers at the end of each round. Each new round will have a different category. After the fifth round, we will have the final exam, which will test you on the toughest questions we have covered in the previous rounds. Everyone ready? Let's get started. Round number one, the category is football. Thanks to listeners Jackson and Logan for this category idea. Thanks, boys. Question one, how many points is a touchdown worth? Question two, which NFL player legally changed his name to match his jersey number? Question three, what is the place on the field that you must step into to score a touchdown? Question four, which player on the football team usually throws the football? Question five. There are three NFL teams in the state of New York. One of them is the Buffalo Bills. 
What are the other two New York teams? Question six. What is it called when a player drops the ball? Question seven. Which NFL team is named after an Edgar Allan Poe poem? And now the answer is to round one. Question one. How many points is a touchdown worth? Six. Touchdown, six points. And then what happens after a touchdown? Do you know? You can go it, for something is, else. Is that when you kick it through the yellow Yep, thingy? you can go for an extra point, which means you kick it through the goalpost, or you can go for two points, which means you have to run it into the... Well, I can't tell you that because that's an answer coming up, but... I, I'm sorry, guys. I do not know much about it's almost like a It's almost like a mini touchdown. And then you get two points after you get the six points. Oh, cool. Question two. Which NFL player legally changed his name to match his jersey number? Chad Johnson. On August 29, 2008, Cincinnati wide receiver Chad Johnson legally changed his name to Chad Ochocinco. 8-5 in Spanish, to match his jersey number. On July 24th, 2012, Chad Ochocinco legally changed his name back to Chad Johnson. <laughs> You're very committed to the sport, Mr. Chad Ochocino. Cinco. Ochocinco, sorry. What did you change your name to? Quinn, what was your favorite number, 16? Yeah. Quinn 16? No, it's Quinn uh, Uno... No. Oh, yeah, you're right. Quinn... Uno seis? No. It's, yeah. Uh, once you don't say three, six, four, six. Dieci seis. Dieci No, dieci seis. Dieci seis. Quinn, dieci seis. Or uno seis. Uno seis or dieci seis. Question three. What is the place on the field that you must step in to score a touchdown? The end zone. Okay. I know this one. You knew that one? Yes. It's like that rectangle at the end of the field on either side that you have to run into. Yeah. Yeah. Question four. Which player on the football team usually throws the football? The quarterback. I need this one, too. Who's your favorite quarterback? I only know one, so Aaron Rodgers. Oh, no! No! <laughs> you take that back. I don't know any other quarterback. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. What about, like, Tom Brady? Do you know him? He's a quarterback? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Aaron Rodgers. What about? Good grief. Wait, who's that guy on the, on the Kansas oh, team? Oh, Patrick Mahomes? Yes, is he one? Uh-huh. Okay, I knew that one. You can pick him. I'm fine with that one. <laughs> Question five. There are three NFL teams in the state of New York. One of them is the Buffalo Bills. What are the other two New York teams? The New York Jets and the New York Giants. Which ones do you like? Um... I'm impartial. I don't really like or dislike any of those teams. Oh, so you're like, nah, yeah. not really. I'm like, nah, whatever. Question six. What is it called when a player drops the ball? Fumble. I knew there was something about fumbling in football. Didn't know that that was what it yep. was. It's when you have control of the ball and then somebody either knocks it out of your hand or somebody, or you just drop it. And then either the other team can land on it and then they get the ball. Or if your team lands on it, you get the ball back. Oh, nice. Question seven. Which NFL team is named after an Edgar Allan Poe poem? The Baltimore Ravens. The name Ravens was derived from the poem The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, who was born in Boston, but lived and died and is buried in Baltimore. How old was he when he passed away? We don't know. He was from like the late 1800s, so he was a long, long time ago. Oh. Have you ever heard of Edgar Allan Poe? I I mean, I feel like I've heard the name. Yeah. I don't know He's the a guy. pretty famous poet. He And this, this poem that they're talking about called The Raven. Is that why it's called the poem? Poe? No, no. That just happens to be his last name. It's just ironic that his last name is Poe and he was a poet. Round two. 
The category is African animals. Thanks again to Molly, the same girl who gave us the great joke earlier. Thanks, Molly. Question one. Which animal is a member of the mongoose family, does not drink water, and can eat scorpions? Question two. True or false? At full speed, cheetahs spend more time in the air than on the ground. Question three. Which massive bird has eyes bigger than its brain? Question four. How many tongues do lemurs have? Question five. How heavy is a giraffe's heart? Question six. What is a male zebra called? Question seven. What color is hyena poop? And now the answer is to round two. Question one. Which animal is a member of the mongoose family, does not drink water, and can eat scorpions? A meerkat. So let me tell you how they eat scorpions because it has become like a infamous way that they do this because scorpions have poison and can sting you, right? So what the meerkat does is it zeroes in on the tail, biting off the scorpion's stinger and throwing it away. And then without its tail, the scorpion is unable to shoot venom into the meerkat's bloodstream. But the claw-like pinchers at the end of the scorpion's arm look deadly, but they're actually just for grabbing and holding, so no venom is distributed through them. So with the stinger gone, the scorpion's fate is pretty much sealed, but there's still venom in its exoskeleton. So what the meerkats do is they take the um, scorpion and they rub it in the sand to wipe off any of the venom on their exoskeleton, and then they eat it. Well, that's really cool. Let's talk about how they drink water. So even though they live in deserts, they don't need to drink water because they get the moisture they need through the insects and grubs that they eat. So that's pretty interesting that they, they must, I would assume they eat a lot of grubs and insects to be able to get enough to drink just with that. Question two, true or false? At full speed, cheetahs spend more time in the air than on the ground. True. At full speed, up to 75 miles an hour, cheetahs spend more than half their time with all four paws in the air. That's cool. cool. I like that fact yep. a lot. Question three. Which massive bird has eyes bigger than its brain? An ostrich. The eye of an ostrich can be the size of a billiard ball, but their brains are tiny. So a billiard ball is the same thing as like a pool ball, like an eight ball. Oh, man. Question four. How many tongues do lemurs have? They have two tongues. The main one is for eating with an under tongue underneath that is used to remove hair and debris. That's cool. That's weird. And, and weird, yes. It's very interesting. I know. Question five. How heavy is a giraffe's heart? 25 pounds. A giraffe's heart, on average, weighs 25 pounds and works hard to pump blood throughout its tall body. I suppose that makes sense because that's what a, a heart's job is to get blood everywhere. And when you're that tall and it has to reach all the way up to your brain and the tippy top of your head, it's got to be heavy to pump blood all the way up there. That's, uphill. that's amazing. But what would be 25 pounds so that I can kind of picture what this heart would be? Probably like a three-year-old child. Like Brooks weighs about 32 pounds. So a child a little smaller than Brooks. That's crazy. Question six. What is a male zebra called? A stallion. 
Isn't that like a type of wild horse? Wild stallion. Yeah, and a male zebra, apparently. Huh. I did not know that. Question seven. What color is hyena poop? Shockingly, hyena poop is white. It is bright white from all of the calcium that it eats from ingested bones. Crazy. That's disgusting, but it's also... Super interesting. Yes. I would have never guessed white. (laughs) I would have guessed light. Brown. The color of a prune. (laughs) Dark purple. Yes. I don't know. Round three. The category is Ninjago. Thanks so much to three brothers from Alaska, Jace, Ashton, and Blake. Question one. Who is Lloyd's father? Question two. What is Master Wu's favorite drink? Question three. Which of the ninjas is actually a nindroid? Question four. Who is the green ninja? Question five. Who created the stone army? Question six. Which ninja wears a blue outfit? Question seven. Who is the mother of all dragons? Round three answers. Question one. Who is Lloyd's father? Lord Garmadon. I don't know much about Ninjago, (laughs) but I do know this. I had to look this up because I didn't want to say it wrong. Is it Ninjago or Ninjago? Ninjago. It is Ninjago. Yep. So I used to watch Ninjago all the time, but I don't know. I haven't really been into it lately. Yeah. Brooks likes it. So Lord Garmadon is black and has four arms and one of those, I don't know what you describe it, but it's one of, it's one of those helmets that look like they have shingles. Oh, like kind of like a samurai helmet that comes down? Yes, I don't know what it's called either, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Question two, what is Master Wu's favorite drink? Tea. Question three, which of the ninjas is actually a nindroid? Zane. I had to ask Quinn, what is a nindroid? It's like a ninja robot. A ninja robot. Huh. So I'm not exactly sure what happened, but I think Zane got like injured or something and they have to like replace his body with like metal parts. Oh, kind of like a cyborg? Yeah. Oh, ninja cyborg. Question four, who is the green ninja? Lloyd. Son of Lord Garmadon. Yes. Question five. Who created the stone army? The Overlord. Ooh, that's, I don't... That sounds menacing. The Overlord. It does. I don't know anything about this character, though. Question six. Which ninja wears a blue outfit? Jay. So who are all the Ninjago characters? Like all the actual ninjas. Kai. I know there's a Kai. There's a Kai. I think there's a Nia or a Mia or something like that. Okay. There's a Jay. There's a Lloyd. There's a Cole. There's a Zane. And there's this other girl. And I don't remember her name. Hmm. There's more than I thought. What are what are the colors they wear? Well, Jay wears green. No, I'm sorry, Jay wears blue. Lloyd wears green. Cole wears black, Zane wears white, Nia, I think her name is, she also wears red. Question seven, who is the mother of all dragons? 
The Firstborn. Is that Daenerys Targaryen? Kazinte. <laughs> Round four. The category is Dangerous Dinosaurs. This category idea comes from listener Sam. Thanks, Sam. Question one. Stegosaurus was a plant eater, but was actually really tough. How did Stegosaurus protect itself from its enemies? Question two. What small but deadly bird-like dinosaur had a sickle-curved toe claw on each foot that they would use to grasp their escaping prey? Question three. Which dinosaur is said to have had the sharpest teeth that were roughly the size of bananas. Question four, which dinosaur is recognized as the world's first swimming dinosaur and was the largest carnivorous dinosaur on the planet? Question five, what herbivore had an armored body with a knobby hundred pound tail that was used both for defense and attack purposes? Question six, what is the name of the film series that began in 1993 with a scientist cloning the dinosaurs through ancient DNA. Question 7. When the first dinosaur bones were discovered in China almost 2,000 years ago, they thought they were actually the bones from what? And now the answers to round four. Question one. Stegosaurus was a plant eater, but was actually really tough. How did Stegosaurus protect itself from its enemies? It smacked them with its spiky tail. That's a pretty fancy weapon. Yeah. And I think, isn't Stegosaurus the one who had those bony plates on the top of it? So yeah. So that probably helped protect it from its enemies too. Mm-hmm. Question two. What small but deadly bird-like dinosaur had a sickle-curved toe claw on each foot that they would use to grasp their escaping prey? Velociraptor. Yikes, I feel like even that question was menacing. Sickle-like claw toe. The sun's very dark. It does. Question three, which dinosaur is said to have had the sharpest teeth that were roughly the size of bananas? T-Rex. So think of how big a banana is. Like about the size of... About the size of your forearm. Yeah. From, f for me, as a small 11-year-old, maybe a 10-year-old, from the bottom of my hand to my elbow. I mean, the bottom of my wrist to my elbow. And then think about a whole row around a mouth of that. <laughs> no thanks. I'm glad we don't live with dinosaurs. Question four. Which dinosaur is recognized as the world's first swimming dinosaur and was the largest carnivorous dinosaur on this planet? The Spinosaurus. With an approximate weight of 10 tons, this predator had large crocodile-like jaws that were used to pin the fish from deep rivers. If they weigh, if they were that big, think of what they could eat. That's crazy. And I know Spinosaurus had Dolphin. like a had like a huge kind of sail on the back, all the way on their back to help them swim. Question five: What herbivore had an armored body with a knobby hundred-pound tail that was used both for defense and attack purposes? 
The Ankylosaurus. This heavy tail was Ankylosaurus's strength and can generate enough force to crush the enemy's bones once swung around. So it was basically like a wrecking ball at the end of his tail and it would just like <laughs> whap and crush your bones. Kind of like the Stegosaurus, but with a spiky right. mace on the back of its tail. <laughs> this one was just a big old wrecking ball, and the, and the Stegosaurus had a spiky, pokey one. So is it Ankylosaurus or Ankylosaurus? I said Ankylosaurus. Question six. What is the name of the film series that began in 1993 with a scientist cloning dinosaurs through ancient DNA? Jurassic Park. So I haven't let you watch Jurassic Park yet because it is a little scary. But the way that they clone the dinosaurs is that the scientist guy finds a mosquito that was fossilized in amber. And that mosquito had sucked the blood out of dinosaurs. And so they took the blood from the mosquito and they cloned the dinosaurs that way. Weird. Pretty smart, though, huh? Pretty smart. Yeah, it's very smart. Question seven. When the first dinosaur bones were discovered in China almost 2,000 years ago, they thought they were actually the bones from what? Dragons. I feel like this kind of goes together with the last category. Like, mother of all dragons. Chinese people thought dinosaur bones were from dragons. Mm Mm-hmm. Round five. The category is name the Disney movie. So how this round is going to work is I'm going to give you a lyric from a song and you tell me which Disney movie it comes from. Question one. Look at me. I will never pass for a perfect bride or a perfect daughter. Question two. A dream is a wish your heart makes when you're fast asleep. Question three. Tale as old as time, true as it can be. Question four. Mama, I don't have time for dancing. That's just going to have to wait a while. Question five. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. Question six. And so I'll read a book or maybe two or three. I'll add a few new paintings to my gallery. Question seven. Have you ever heard the wolf cry to the blue corn moon or asked the grinning bobcat why he grinned? Round five answers. Question one. Look at me. I will never pass for a perfect bride or a perfect daughter. That is from Mulan. She sang the song titled Reflection in the movie. I don't know that I've ever seen Mulan all the way through. You want to sing that song for me? I I don't know the song. (laughs) This is like one of the Disney songs I don't know. But I think she's singing it because... Because she's not a perfect reflection of, like, all of her ancestors that have been, like... Because she's doing she's doing stuff that her ancestors wouldn't be proud of her doing. Because she's a girl and she wants to do boy yeah. stuff. Right. Question two. A dream is a wish your heart makes when you're fast asleep. Cinderella. She sings this song at the beginning of the movie when she's getting dressed. A dream is a wish your heart makes when you're fast asleep. Okay, we get it. (laughs) (laughs) Question three. Tale as old as time, true as it can be. That's from Beauty and the Beast. 
Mrs. Potts sings this when Belle and the Beast are dancing in the ballroom. I had a really, really hard time not singing that instead of just saying the oldest time. Question four. Mama, I don't have time for dancing. That's just going to have to wait a while. The Princess and the Frog. Tiana sings almost there to her mother when she's working on making her own cafe. Question five. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. That's from Toy Story. Song plays at the beginning of the movie. It kind of sounds like Aladdin. It could be the one like, you ain't never had a friend like me. But that's not the song. This is, you got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. Yeah, it does sound like, because you never had a friend like me. (sighs) Question six. And so I'll read a book, or maybe two, or three. I'll add a few new paintings to my gallery. That's from Tangled. Rapunzel sings, When Will My Life Begin? when she's doing her chores at the beginning of the movie. I felt like that that was hard not to sing when I was saying it. And so I'll read Read a book, book, or or maybe two, or three. I'll add a few new paintings to my gallery. My favorite lyric to that song goes and then i'll brush and brush and brush and brush my hair question seven have you ever heard the wolf cry to the blue corn moon or ask the grinning bobcat why he grinned pocahontas this lyric is from the song colors of the wind have you ever heard the wolf cry to To the the blue blue corn moon or ask the grinning bobcat why he grinned I have never seen a grinning bobcat. They look kind of mean. (laughs) (laughs) It's like the Cheshire cat from Alice. Right. I don't think there's a Cheshire Cheshire bobcat out in the (laughs) forest right now. Maybe. I don't know. Possibly. And now it's time for the final exam. Now, remember, you've heard these questions in the previous rounds, but these were the hardest ones we've had. So use your memory and try to think back to what the answers are. Question one. What is the place on the field that you must step into to score a touchdown? The end zone. Question two. How heavy is a giraffe's heart? 25 pounds. Question three. What herbivore had an armored body with a knobby 100-pound tail that was used both for defense and attack purposes? Ankylosaurus or Ankylosaurus? Question four. In Ninjago, who created the stone army? The Overlord. Question five. Which NFL team is named after an Edgar Allan Poe poem? The Baltimore Ravens. Question six. Which massive bird has eyes bigger than its brain? An ostrich. Question seven. Which dinosaur is recognized as the world's first swimming dinosaur and was the largest carnivorous dinosaur on the planet? Spinosaurus. So you're going to go back to school tomorrow? You're going to give it another go? Or are you just going to say, nope, I'm stay gonna try. home? going to try. try? That's good. That's all I can ask, right? Mm-hmm. What are you going to have for breakfast in the morning? Food. Wow. <laughs> Food? Yes. The best thing to have at breakfast. Well, thank goodness. We've got some of that. Okay, good. What kind of food do you like for breakfast? Today you had donuts, but that was just a special day sort of treat. Yeah. I like bacon a lot. Like pancakes. Bacon. <laughs> I like toast. You're going to make them think I that like I'm cereal. this like, stellar mom who wakes up and makes you bacon and stuff. No, but you are a stellar mom. Oh, you're very kind. How about on a normal day when we're scrambling around the house like, get your get your face washed, get your teeth brushed, comb your hair, get your clothes on. Those days. What do you eat for breakfast when we're... Toast or cereal? Yeah, toast or cereal. Maybe tomorrow you can have toast or cereal. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Hey, happy back to school if you guys are going back this week. Have a safe year. Yep. 
Thank you guys for listening. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Trivia for Kids Podcast. And if you have a question idea or even an entire category, please email us at Trivia for Kids Podcast at gmail.com.